Good afternoon, YouTube. Thank you for stopping by. Make sure to tell me how you like this video. And if you do, like and subscribe. If you don't, let me know what I can do better. We have been extremely busy, as I said in the last video. I'm just going to run over what we're working on right now at the shop. Um, diagnose this 2017 Jag Jaguar XE Turbo 2 liter. This is a fuel pressure sensor. It's like on a little quick connect T brackety thing. Um, I'd ordered the I'd ordered a fuel pressure sensor from World Pack. It came in. It was the wrong one. Uh, this is the low pressure side <clears throat> before the high pressure fuel pump, and it comes from the dealer with that assembly. This is going on tomorrow. I have that car for a few days. It's uh, it's very easy to get to. It's like half an hour. Uh, I've got a 07 Grand Cherokee. We've been trying to figure this one out. Uh, of course, every time he comes in, the check engine light is not on and it's not stored in history. P0507, high idle code. He repair. He just bought this thing like a month ago. He's repaired a broken vacuum hose already, um, but likely that's where we're headed with some other vacuum leak um, going on. I have a 2011 Kia Soul here. Um, this one's been here for a day. I won't, uh, the battery light was on. Um, he said he went to the auto parts store. They said it's charging at like 12.2 volts. I, I told him like, don't drive at all anymore. Just come straight here, drop it off. Um, dealer only alternator except for junky, you know, CarQuest aftermarket ones. No Denso available, no Bosch. Um, dealer was actually cheaper than the Bosch that would have come here later. It was further away. Um, so I got the dealer one, but it won't be here till tomorrow. Pretty easy alternator. Um, other things, Explorer here. This one is 06. And what happened on this one is that the customer was driving at a coolant explosion. Can you see that plastic T right there? That T broke, exploded all over, um, shot coolant everywhere. He thought that was the only problem. However, when we brought it in, there's some coolant that it exploded. This one's been here for about a week and a half, been waiting on an engine. And the reason why we're doing an engine is because when we got it in here, this is inside the radiator overflow. It's similar situation inside the radiator as well. But that gunk on the walls there, the crystallized stuff, is like a head gasket stop leak junk. So uh, we tried to do a uh, head gasket chemical test. That is not 100% guarantee to make a failure. It did not fail on us. Uh, but what we found in here, plus what we found in the radiator, that stop leak junk. We told him, so you can see kind of like remnants of it there. We told him someone's put sealant, some sort of stop leak sealant into the cooling system. Um, that seems to have failed, causing the blowout of the hose and it's a head gasket issue. So also the thing ran like complete garbage. Uh, when we first started it up and had tons of smoke out the back. So likely someone put the sealant in there. They knew there was a head gasket issue, potentially did that. Uh, that stuff didn't work or failed and then blew out the hose, dumped all the coolant. He drove it for a few miles, overheating it further um, and necessitating an engine because it was making some knocking noises as well as having that um, smoke and everything out the exhaust, so doing a head gasket job on that would be really high risk. And there's no guarantee that the, the block wasn't damaged at that time. So this one's getting an engine. It'll be here tomorrow. Uh, other things, 2019 RAV, uh, sorry, Highlander. Um, this one's kind of interesting. The customer uh, bought it, drove it around the country for four months with her family and uh, hauled like a camper trailer thing with it. I assume fairly small. 
um, her complaint was that it's been to three dealers. It ha they have all said that this like shoddy power wire to the uh, trailer, you know, connector is causing all sorts of issues. Rough running, um, like hard to start after getting fuel, um, multiple check engine light codes, misfires, um, and all sorts of things. We sort of called BS on that and turns out it is absolutely not the cause, although it is a terrible job. You can see like the power wire just kind of run along here. It's like pinched, pinched places. It's like just not good. Like there's like even a, like a, like a connector like pinched, right? That, that's just, that's junk. I mean, whoever did this is, should not be putting in, you know, any sort of wiring. Anyway, um, what happened, what we found is that the car uh, fuel trims were all jacked up opening the fuel cap would really alter that. Um, purge valve under the hood, the EVAP purge valve was functioning. Scan tool, we can command it on off. It seemed to hold pressure, but back here, this was kind of weird. So at first my tech thought that the vent valve, which is up under there, uh, could have been clogged or stuck or something. Um, confirmed that was not the case. Traced the vent pipe up into the wheel well on the driver's side under the fender liner. It's the secondary pipe next to the main filler neck. This is the EVAP vent valve pipe. Um, on the end of this, there was a plastic housing with a paper filter inside. And you can see the car is pretty dirty. Um, in her travels, she knows of two separate occasions where they buried the rear end in sand and um, really hard time getting out, flung sand and dirt everywhere. This is that plastic housing that was connected. We broke it open, cut it, um, but it went like like this, has this paper filter inside, very dirty. We knocked out a bunch of dirt from in here. And I think it went this way. Sure, looks good. And then it's sucking air in through those two little holes by my thumb and then connects onto the, the pipe here. So the only real vent is here and what our hypothesis is and proved by removing this, um, the fuel trims went back to normal, is that this being clogged up, this being clogged up wouldn't allow air to get in, enough air to vent the tank properly. And therefore you would have fuel trim issues and it would run like garbage and misfire, all sorts of stuff. So luckily this, this piece was available separately from the dealer for like $45. Uh, it won't be here till Friday. Today's Wednesday. And that is what we have going on. I rearranged some oil drums. Uh, I keep, I don't know, normally like eight or nine here. Coolant, trans, uh, waste, coolant, 540 euro, almost empty 540 euro, new 530 blend. 520 blend, 020 synthetic. Um, rearrange this to make room for this large 300, I think, 330 gallon waste oil tank. I used to have, uh, we would used to just fill up drums and then I have a guy who would come by and pick them up and he would burn them in a, like a oil reheating, an oil heating um, thing at his shop. And turns out that's not, so reliable. So after six years of him doing that, I finally bought one of these from like safety clean. So they'll come when we see it get up high and pump it out, pay money to get that done. Whereas the other guy did it free, but it's, it's much more convenient. Um, other coolant drum almost empty. 
out back. Got a 93 Chevy, oh, the, the Cadillac with the radiator job is still here. Been trying to find a radiator for that for two months. Seems like we got a line on one. It should be here Friday, if it actually happens. Um, the Ray, uh, sorry, the S10 Blazer. That running like garbage. Other, he bought it like a month ago. Um, Mini Cooper is here. The window won't roll up. Regulator is on the way to be here. I think Monday, so like four business days, three business days. Um, I just told the guy, hey, we can park it inside for you overnight, every night, and I'll just pull it in and out um, to be nice. Uh, the Blazer. This is the fuel injector, one injector within these plastic, like pressurized pop off, pop it valves. So, old system, uh, pressure regulator here. One of these lines was cut inside the intake manifold and then another one was like leaking So fuel was leaking into the intake manifold causing all sorts of issues with, with drivability. It just wasn't running well So we're replacing this whole like spider assembly uh, Parts issue O'Reilly showed it in stock at another store. I ordered last night did not receive today Then they called and said um, It is not there. So I had to order online and it overnight and it'll be here tomorrow um played around with creating this little like cheesy service cart it seems to be really great so i don't have to like carry all my normal oil change tools around um oil change tire rotation basically that's it keep a little trash bucket down there um which i don't always get stuff into but yeah that's kind of kind of cool saves me from walking back and forth since I'm working in the shop more. Um, I think that is it as far as what we have going on, at least for the past couple days. So thank you for spending a few minutes with me. Let me know uh, how you like this style of video. If you just like seeing what's going around around the shop and um, listen to me chat about different problems, kind of how we work in here and have a good day. Thank you.